why is there all this competition to be near the top of the search ads anyway? Well, it's been shown again and again that ads near the top of the page attract the most attention. They're, um, they tend to be the ones that are most relevant to the search term, uh, and so therefore they're the most likely for the, the user to actually be interested in. Uh, but you know, it's important to note that bidding can be expensive and can result in bidding wars. Uh, so you should be tracking over time how your ads are doing. So how do you do that? Well, you do that by keeping careful track of how the campaigns are actually running. And Google Ads, uh, AdWords will give you a lot of this information. You want to know how many people saw your ad, which is called the impressions. You want to know how many people clicked on the ad, which is called the, the clicks. And you want to know how many people purchase based upon the coming from those locations. And that one you're going to have to track on your own internally. Luckily, Google actually has the ability to hook up Google AdWords with Google Analytics, and so you can all track that within their platform, right? But given the fact that you're tracking all that, you can then calculate things like the click-through rate, which is clicks divided by impressions of an ad, and the conversion rate, which is conversions divided by clicks. So by tracking the campaign using these statistics, you can examine the value of the campaign by determining the cost per acquisition for, say, a particular set of key phrases, an ad, whatever you want to look at, right? So let's imagine that we're just going to look at key phrases, for example, right? We're going to keep the ad the same. Um, so we have four different sets of key phrases here, low-carb diet plan, low-carb plus diet plan, diet plan in quotes, and low-carb diet plan. And what we can do is we can look at the impressions we get through each of those, the clicks that we get for each of those, uh, and what one of the things Google AdWords will tell us, whatever the platform is, our average cost per click, right? Um, or it'll tell us our total cost for that campaign, in which case, if we know the clicks, we can figure out our average cost per clicks by dividing one by the other, right? So we can take these numbers, and together, we can put together what the total cost of that ad cost, right, for all the impressions that we saw. Now, you might think that something like click-through rate is really what we want to be optimizing, right? So 10% click-through rate seems pretty good. You know, maybe that's a good way to go. Um, but it might be the fact that in, that in reality, because of the cost we're paying, that that's not the best way to go. Or maybe it might be that we just get a lot fewer conversions. So in this particular case, right, we're seeing for the top two words, we're seeing about a 10%. For this one, we're only seeing about an 8%. For this one, we're seeing a 20% click -through quite high, right? Um, but we're seeing a lot fewer impressions because this one matches it gets a lot less work, or a lot less searches, right? Then we look at our conversions. Well, we see five conversions for the most broad match, right? Probably because it's probably the least likely to actually be relevant to people, right? Slightly more once we make sure that we add in diet. Um, and then, you know, we see the most number uh, for the exact match, but we're also seeing the fewer number of impressions. Right? And so we can then calculate a conversion rate. And so then we can calculate a cost per acquisition by simply taking the total cost of that particular campaign and dividing by the conversion. Right? And that gives us how much it's costing us for each of these individuals. And this now gives us a way to compare against all these different impressions, all these different clicks, because it's telling us for that particular conversion for that particular campaign to create a conversion here's what it costs and here we see striking differences even though some of these numbers look fairly similar right so for the um low carb diet plan the very broad match it's really expensive because not a whole lot of people um are actually good matches for us right now the low carb plus diet plan and diet plan in quotes that's quite a bit better um you know in terms of getting the cost but the best cost per acquisition is actually this really tightly niched one. Now, this won't always be the case. It might very well be the case that this one just never has any searches, and so even though it has a low cost per acquisition, the total number of conversions you're gonna get is very low, right? But in many cases, you're gonna have to worry about the balancing that out, and a lot of times it's better to have multiple low cost per acquisition rather than having one high cost per acquisition target.
by the way, to carry out all this analysis, you have to have the ability to track users on your site. And there's a number of ways to do that. Um, there's something called a tracking pixel where you basically uh, create a pixel for every user that you want to track and make sure that that pixel is displayed uh, whenever they're opening emails or whatever throughout the site. You could have cookies that you're using to track them across the site. You can use third party tracking. That usually means um, calling out to like an advertising site or something, giving them information about the person that's currently on your site and letting them match against other individuals. Um, or of course, Google Analytics, right, does this as well. And Google Analytics, if you're gonna use AdWords, it's a great way to go because then you can tie all of your optimization and all of your advertising into one uh, particular setup. In the end, you shouldn't be using search ads because they provide you a really low cost entry way, right? You can really control the amount of money you're spending. Every dollar is trackable. You can see exactly how you're spending. You know, it, it kind of defeats the old conundrum of I don't know where my marketing dollars are valuable or not because you can look and see where they're valuable. It really allows you to do very targeted ad placement and you're providing customers with what they want when they want it. They came and they searched. So they must want something at that point, and you're providing them the ability to get that. Now, on the downside, there is there have been problems with click fraud, where competitors, for instance, will click on on a on a competitor's ad to kind of drive up the prices. Google constantly tries to combat this, as others do as well, right? Trying to figure out when uh, people should when people are not clicking on the ads to actually purchase products. In fact, uh, often when I'm demoing this technology in class. Um, Google will stop showing me ads because it's realized that I'm not actually making any purchases, right? So they have ways to combat click fraud over time. Um, bidding wars and climbing cost per clicks can be a problem, right? So um, if I notice that I'm in search rank one and I have a bidding X dollars and all of a sudden I'm in search rank two, I might notice, oh, my, my competitor is beating me out. I need to bid more. And so then they bid more and then we bid more and so forth. So you have to constantly monitor these things to make sure that they're doing well. But that's the basics of search advertising. I hope that helps. Uh, and I really think it is a great way to kind of get into digital marketing really quickly and get into digital marketing analytics. And I could honestly spend a lot more time on this topic. And in fact, there's a whole Google AdWords challenge around trying to develop techniques in this space. Uh, but uh, that's a good introduction and we'll leave it there for now.